five and dime easton.com you can shop online or in store their address is 140 northampton street easton pa their hours are monday through friday 11 to 7 saturday 10 to 7 and sundays 11 to 5 they carry clothing shoes boards accessories and more you can get complete decks down there they got grip they got some local clothing down there as well i know a couple guys that came on the show that they're now selling stuff in in store and they're exclusive to fucked they are doing so much for the independent uh skate community they're doing so much for uh the diy they're doing a lot in the area with skateboarding and i couldn't be prouder to have them as a sponsor um their story is incredible from starting it when they were 18 and then coming back later in life to opening up what the store is that they wanted and uh the two guys down there are just incredible uh i can't say enough good things about them i love that they're a sponsor and they really help out in the community and if you skate or want to support them please go check them out locally it is 140 Northampton Street, Easton, PA. Online, it is fiveanddimeeaston.com. Please go check them out. All Valley. All Valley Rooter. Jared LaBarba. Friend of the show. Childhood friend. Never again. Studios official plumber. 24-hour emergency services. 610-762-1656. That's 610-762-1656. 1656. They charge by the job, not by the hour, and they are 100% fully insured. They have free estimates. They also do installation and repair. They have a, a list, a list of things. I can't go over them all on here, but you can find them at allvalleyrooter.net. All of Jared's services are on there. It's a beautiful website. You can contact him through that website. You can find out how to do you know, emergency services. Where should I call? Who should I contact? You can get all that there at allvalleyrooter.net. Free estimates, fully insured. Jared LaBarba. Check him out. Luke Delmeyer. Luke Delmeyer Knives. Handcrafted handmade knives i use mine i use mine every time we go to the pop-ups and it is ridiculous it is just something special there's something different it's handcrafted it's handmade um luke has grown since we started the show to now where he is pumping out knives and classes i want to push his classes if you go to lukedelmeyer.com it has all the information for the classes and you get to take a two-day course and you go over everything from safety on how to use it um you're selecting the knife handles out and you're really from top to bottom getting to go through the whole experience where else can you find that in the valley uh luke is a very special person to the show he's really cool we've done projects together we um we have uh, apparel we're doing together. Um, I really want you to go check it out. If you're interested in hand anything, handcrafted stuff, working class stuff, blue collar stuff, like this is the the area you need to go to. But it's Luke Delmeyer. Dot com Luke Delmeyer handcrafted knives. Um, sign up for those classes, those courses. Go check that out. It's really cool. It's a two day event, and um, you get the experience making your own knife, and then you take your knife home with you. Uh, and you're gonna take home a little bit more than that. So uh, check out Luke Delmeyer, friend of the show. Um, always awesome watching him grow. Luke Delmeyer.com. We're just gonna jump right into it. Here again, radio. I have no clue what episode this is. Welcome to Never Again Radio. How are you? Thank you. I'm great. A little cold. Not, not in here, but like outside. <laughs> um, I do good. usually keep it pretty cool in here. Yeah, uh, I'm warm. For fight nights, here. everybody always bitches because I'll like leave a door open. But I run hot. My face yeah. is turning red now. These lights, I'll just start steaming up, and then halfway through, I'll come to normal temperatures. Okay, always cool. run hot. Perfect. Always run hot. How did you get into the bar business? So I have always worked in restaurants, you know. You're um, crazy. You're a crazy person. <laughs> crazy. I just like getting yelled at, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Did you work front or back of the house or both? Front. Yeah. Back. Well, back a little bit, you know, 17, 18, 19. I was working at a pizza place, making cheesesteaks, hoagies. Yeah. And I'm like, this shit isn't for me back there, you know, sweating. And then I moved to the front of the house. It gets rough back there. It does. A lot of yelling. Yeah, a lot, yeah, a lot, a lot of, of yelling. stress, a lot of cursing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Someone called in. He was like, can I order a grinder? I'm like, what the fuck is a grinder? We don't, <laughs> we don't have those. You know? And yeah. Yeah. So lost a sale there. But anyway, moved to the front of the house, served. Money was much better. In the back, like cooking. You're just working for a paycheck. Yeah. I was making maybe five bucks an hour. Moved to the front of the house. It's two eighty three an hour. Butt tips. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you got to work for your money. Um, and then I hopped behind bar 
my brother bartended. I thought it was cool. I wanted to be like him. So it I, is cool. It's it a is, cool profession. You know? Yeah, I, I think like when you're serving, you know, you're listening to the customer. But when you're bartending, the you know, the customer's listening to you. Um, so I like that. You know, I liked being behind the bar. You know, having a little bit of not authority, but like not you know, as a server, you get yelled at. You know, as a bartender, you kind of you don't really have you don't get yelled at like that. You know, by customers, clients, they're not nasty. Yeah, there's a different respect for a bartender yeah. from the customer and from being uh, in a restaurant. Yeah, like yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah, exactly. So I liked it a lot better. You know, it was just you know I didn't have to wear those silly aprons. I could wear a cool black button down, and it was fun making drinks. You know, and talking to people and. You know, the only thing that wasn't fun was the service well. You know, tickets spitting out. Yeah. But other than that, it was cool. Um, yeah, I worked at Music Fest, kind of where I started, like pouring beers, you know, those uh, those nice Music Fest mugs. Yeah. Making, like, basic drinks, you know, Malibu Bay Breezes. Malib- Malibu Bay Breezes, oops. Um, what else? Long Black Island Catonics. was the one I never could remember. It's everything. Um, yeah, that's what they don't. It's and disgusting. Then, like I worked at a, a social club, it was the first place that I ever bartended. I checked IDs. There was no money in that. I was just right. there because my friends were there, and it was a paycheck, and my parents would get off my back. Yeah. And then somebody was like, "Yo, why don't you learn the bar?" And I was like, "I don't know." Mm-hmm. And then um, it's weird. It's like um, I've always been a shy person, and um, a bit of an like with my friends. And whatnot, when I say, like, I'm a shy person, people are like, oh, whatever. But I really am. Yeah. Uh, I get awkward socially. And, like, I, I used to um, shut down a lot. And, and bartending broke a lot of that down because yeah. you're forced to uh, interact with people. And when you walk behind that bar, it's odd. It's like you kind of come into it. And if you've done it, you probably know what I'm talking about. But there's, like, this presence of, like, not authority, but like you are the one kind of in charge right. of like what's going on with the person in front of you. And then like exactly. once you get over the initial like drama, like I used to be very like, I'd be like, don't order a Long Island, don't order a Long yeah. Island. Or then I'd be like, you know, Dino, what's it a Long Island? And he's like, it's the first I and he would show me every time like they'd set the bar up where like yeah. the Long Island was just all next to each other. Mm-hmm. And then like once I got my drinks down. Then, like, I just really enjoyed the pace of it, the buzz of it, the chaoticness of it. And then once I started learning how to interact with the clients, right. that started be. Then I was just like, oh, this is cool. Then you're regulars, then you turn into a therapist. Oh and then, God. <laughs> yeah, geez. yeah, it's, it's a cool job. I did it up until like drinks were thrown in my face, and right. like I was just older. And like, I was I, like, I didn't really ever bartend anywhere like cool or fancy. It was always just shot in a beer bar, yeah. which I liked. It was like roadhouse vibes, but then Those are the last vibes. one yeah. I was at, I was just kind of tired of the people. It was just a, it was like a turning point where, right. Uh, I was doing more of the clothing and like the business was kind of taking off and like, uh, I don't know. I miss it. I definitely like, it's something that like in the back of my head, I'm, or like when I go into a bar and I'm having a good experience with a bartender, I'm like, man, I really miss bartending. It was always good money every night, most of the time, but like it's cash, you know what I mean? Like I I did not mind doing it at all. I miss it. Yeah. Talking about it, I miss yeah, it. That's yeah. why I wanted to do this. Yeah, well, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's it's a cool job. You know, yeah. I don't miss the restaurant side of it, the the working for the public. No offense to the public, but you know, I've worked in dive bars, worked in cocktail bars, you know, music fest, huge crowds. People this is were, fantastic, yeah, by the way. Thank you, thank you. It's blackberry, <laughs> lemon, um, and then some elderflower tonic. Yeah, yeah, and some it's ice. Good. Thank you. Um, what was I saying? So, yeah, I mean. Now I do private events, strictly private events. The public, you don't know who you're going to get, um, who's coming in. And it was always like people who should just go home and not have another drink and come yeah, out. Yeah, Red Bull like just keeps blacked, up, oh blacked out people alive. Yeah, yeah, and you know, with my business, I don't serve any like caffeinated drinks. Um, yeah, like I like Red that. Red Bull <clears throat> and vodka, no, we don't do those. You know what I mean? Even like the espresso martinis, it's like our brand drink. I decaf it, you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't tell people, no. but I want you to sleep <laughs> and I don't want you to die. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, yeah. I mean? No, the Red Bull stuff, I remember when that came into the bar scene, like you're just yeah. now keeping blacked out people awake. Right, 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 right. And they should go home. They should yeah. <laughs> didn't, didn't have another drink. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, restaurant bartending, it's a lot of work sometimes for a little bit of pay. You know, it really depends on the night you're working. I started out bartending Tuesdays and, like, Sundays, and, you know, it was a slow crowd. So, like, I learned to make a lot of different drinks. So, I, like, I did my time there, but I would make maybe 
you know, maybe a hundred bucks, under 50 bucks a night, you know, nothing crazy. But then you work Friday, Saturday nights and that's, you know, that's where it's worth it. But you have to open, work, yeah. close. And th that's tough. You know what I mean? It's tough on your feet. And there's no good restaurant shoes. You know what I mean? No. Like there's, there's all these ads like, you know, like Skechers and all them, you know, like, oh, these are great for your feet. No, they're not. They'll, and even if they are, they last three months. Exactly. Three months. Exactly. So now I just wear whatever these are, Hoka's. No one says anything to me, but <laughs> or boots. But um, yeah, uh, it's restaurant bartending's tough, you know. When did you get out of it? Um, like, did you get out of it and take a break, or did you exit out of it with this business? Let's see. I I took a break. So I was a teacher at one point, um, and bartender at night. You know, teacher in the day, bartender at night. That's where I made my money. It was bartending. And I think when COVID happened, 2020, I left the bar scene um, and I was teaching for a while. And, you know, there's not a lot of money in teaching and it's a lot Did of Did you work. like it? Teaching? Yeah. Uh, it was rewarding sometimes, but... Um, I wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah. I mean, just waking up at like seven, sometimes earlier, you know, just having to be children. on, like, just yeah. Just scream at them. Yeah. And it was high schoolers. <laughs> I taught high schoolers. So yeah, yeah. They're, they're babies, you know, like those ninth graders, they were. No, I can't kids. deal with the college kids that work with us on break. Yeah. Like they're cool and like we get along and it's funny, but like sometimes I'm just like, dude, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. Right, right, right. Like right. I can't wait for you to get older. I can't, I can't, I cannot, <laughs> exactly. like I, I don't have the patience for you to understand this. Right, right. Exactly. And. It was just mentally draining, you know, the kids, the, t the other teachers, the administration. It was a lot of work for a little bit of money. And I know I sound like a snob saying that, but. No, I don't. I know. A lot, I, I have yeah. friends who are teachers and some of them left during COVID. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I taught online for a bit. And then um, I was bartending at a wedding venue in Allentown. Um, How'd you get the gig? A friend of mine. So yeah. this is like, it's like. It's not like a secret place. You know, I'll give them a shout out. Vault 634, they support me. You know, we team up every now and then and do stuff together. Yeah. Um, but a friend of mine is a manager there, uh, Shanice. And she was like, hey, you know, it's COVID time. She's like, hey, do you want to bartend again? And I'm like, um, maybe, you know. She's like, it's just private events. You know, it's, it's weddings. Yeah. It's weddings, people are happy. I'm like, all right, let's do it. And it was the kind of job where you had to be asked to work there. You can't apply. Maybe it's different now. But you had to be asked. It wasn't like, you know, you knew about this place. People, like, asked you to work there. So I bartended there. And I loved it. Weddings are different. People are happy. Everyone's happy. Yeah. You know, if someone's... Drinks like, are free. Drinks are free. <laughs> you know, they're throwing money most of the time. Yeah. It's good vibes. Um, and if someone gets too drunk, you just tell them, hey, you're a bit too drunk. You're going to embarrass yourself, you know? Yeah. Or you tell the couple, or, you know, if it gets to that point, you know, and it's it's easy to handle you know it's it's good it's good it's a good gig um, yeah i don't think anyone <clears throat> well i mean i never saw it but I, I mean it's probably hard for someone to argue with a bartender at a wedding yeah it's happened yeah, like, <laughs> to it's <you>? happened yeah. <laughs> yeah to me yeah believe it or not about cutting them off yeah, yeah. always that and you know I'm, it's always the weird it's the weirdest part about the job it is you know um and i'm just trying to serve safe keep people safe you know you ever have to drive people home no I did that when I worked at uh, a bar, and then it became a thing where he was like, okay, you're going to take me home now. And then it was like an expected thing. Wow. But I always had like a conscience in the back of my head where I was like, what if this dude leaves and like, right. you know, kills someone or kills himself? It's always just, uh, it's the odd thing about bartending that no one really talks about. Yeah, it's scary. I think if a lot of people realize that you're responsible for yeah. your serve, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. and that you get a lot of trouble, huge amount of trouble, you know, yeah. and I, I think, you know, not everybody realizes it, but, you know, you bar, professional bartenders, they take, you know, a ramp certification test. It's like a four hour test online and you learn how to save or safely save, uh, safely serve liquor. Um, and, you know, if you have that and something happens, you won't get in as big of trouble, you know, as big as a fine or whatever. But still, you're responsible. And, you know, it's it's scary. So I always just try to serve safely. And, you know, I tell the person, hey, listen, this is my livelihood. This is my job. I just want to keep you safe and everybody else safe. And usually the guys have a hard time hearing that. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but the ladies are always like, you're right. You know, yeah. You know, I'm what... glad we had this. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, I did a private event um, for Liz Kepner-Babashak. She, uh, she was the former F WFMZ um, anchor. 
And one of her girls was like, oh, I don't know what to drink. And she was like kind of drunk. And I'm like, how about some water? And she's like, that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, like so easy, you know? Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah, have yeah. to. Yeah, you know, I don't have to beg or anything, you know. But. Yeah, well, like when somebody suggests water when you're drinking and you're at the point when you can still make a decision to <laughs> right. hydrate, it's like one of the best things ever. Right. I remember, like, we watch fights down here all the time. Like, we watch them over there and we'll make drinks and stuff. And um, I remember my buddy was like, yeah, I think I'm going to have a water. And I was like, yeah, let's drink water. And then I'll have this moment where I'm like, I can't, like, you're going to be drunk until tomorrow. Right. Like, there's no point in adding on top of it. But right. it, once in a blue moon, I'll catch it. It's hard to catch. Yeah. It's hard to catch. It is. But uh, it is. when I do, uh, I do escape a hangover. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. When you decided that this was going to be your next step, did you just start doing private events only then? And, like, was kind of, like, one foot out of teaching, one foot into the bar scene again? Um... Yeah, I was kind of, you know, during the day teaching still, night bartending, but when I started House Bar, I just couldn't do both. Um, you know, it was just, I was getting inquiries during the day, people were calling me, and you know, I can't just like stop what I'm doing during my, you know, 8 to 5, what was it, 8 to 4.30 job, and take a call, not always. So I just, I quit it. Um, and at the time, I wasn't exactly teaching, but I was working in education yeah. for a graduate school online. It's and hard to do both. It is. It's, it is. It's, I did both um, with this up until I couldn't anymore. And then yeah. you just have to make a decision of whether or not you want to go 100% in. Right. Right, right, right. Yeah. 100% in with the business. Or do you want to keep dedicating time to both? And it'll never go any further because you can't. Right. It can't grow if you're not giving it all the time it needs. Exactly. So I had that epiphany you know and i didn't leave my full-time job for a monetary reason like house part wasn't making you know a, a whole lot of money when i left my full-time job but i thought if i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do it right so i quit i went to europe for a month hung out tasted a bunch of stuff cocktails came back with this huge fresh mindset of you know how i'm gonna run house bar how i'm gonna make my drinks you know the experience i'm gonna provide what i'm gonna slow down because yeah. i don't want you to skip over the <laughs> part where you went to europe <laughs> Right. So, like, what was your what was your reasoning going to Europe? Is it because you wanted to travel there, or did you want to get inspired by drinks and cocktails and see bartenders? Everything. What was the point of going to Europe? Everything. So, how I did you set it, the trip up? Well, when I quit my job, I called it my mini retirement. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna go away for a month and just get like a fresh perspective, a fresh outlook Fuck on yeah. life. You know, Europe people, European people, live so much different than us. Yeah, there's a very high quality of life, and I've got some friends over there. So I met up with them, hung out with them. We traveled. We ate good food. We so they took you to like really awesome spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was in Berlin, and um, my friend Grace, she took me to this really funky bar where you had to take your shoes off. <laughs> like you couldn't go in with shoes. Yeah, and you put on little slippers if you wanted to. I had socks on. I'm just weird about putting other people's shoes on. You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> Especially in Berlin. You never know. Yeah, well, like, I feel like when you hit that certain age, you, like, understand what a bowling alley really is. Right, and I'm like, this right. is gross. Yeah, yeah. Fungus city. <laughs> yeah. They're just spraying right. it. Right. <laughs> so I just walked around with no shoes on. I ordered a mocktail. Um, they had really fun, cool cocktails. And we sat on, like, the floor. There were cushions on the floor. It was a very cozy, warm vibe. And yeah. And I'm like, you know what? This is so fucking different. This is awesome. And my friends ordered these really great drinks. I can't remember what exactly they had. It was like a mezcal, strawberry, creamy drink. I'm like, wow. And I tasted everybody's drink. It was, you know, phenomenal. Yeah. But that was a really cool bar. Um, but that was just Berlin. Um, but I traveled, my friend Grace and I, we traveled, all, and my friend Loija, we traveled um, all the way down through Germany. I used to live in Germany um, to where I, we studied. And we when were, did you live in Germany? 2015 to 2016. I studied abroad. I didn't, oh, that's I didn't cool. study. <clears throat> Sorry, mom yeah. and dad. <laughs> you were just living in Germany. <laughs> yeah, just living, hanging out, traveling, just experiencing life, you know? Did you want to come back? Um, so I was like 21, and I was like, I got to come go back to like finish my degree. But no, I didn't really want to come back. Yeah. You know? Life here is like not hard, but it's it's different. It's a rat race. Yeah, you know, it's we're just constantly working. You know, we don't really take time to enjoy ourselves, and it's tough. You know, and you know, I was a student there, so I wasn't working. I didn't have that perspective, you know, of a working person in Europe. But it's just, um, is it? A, 
odd when you like pull yourself out, especially for like even a week, but a month. And then like it takes a couple days for like you to like kind of like calm down and like break yourself from like chasing your tail back here in Pennsylvania. Yeah. And then when you do, you're like, why am I doing any of this stuff? Right. And then right, like, right, right. like I <clears throat> recently went um, to California and we went down the coast mm -hmm. and I remember being down, going down the coast and like just having these like life changing thoughts of like, what am I doing? Yeah. Like why? And then it's, it's crazy. Like how caught up you get doing your every day and then like i even when we go to the outer banks every year because we just go there nice. and there's nothing to do so i like a vacation where we just sit on the beach yeah but like when everything slows down i remember looking at my buddy and being like dude that took like a day and a half to like yeah. stop the get up go 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 yeah. just go to sleep go do more go do more and when you get away and get to go see different cultures and perspectives and like even like people in California lived yeah. so differently. We were at this bar. The guy was making us phenomenal drinks, uh, getting into paper planes. Oh my um, God. Snobby at, drink. <laughs> we were, uh, so we, well, a buddy of mine that travels all the time, he got into Manhattans. Yeah. And then I was like, I don't know. I always just, but then he like made it well and he would like bought, um, the filthy cherries uh, mm -hmm. online, and then like I started getting into knowing like what cherries to use, and like mm -hmm. it changed the drink. And then I was like, yeah. oh, a couple of these are delicious. Then I got into old fashions because he was like drinking the Manhattans. So then I started making like my own old fashions and getting right. into making them for my friends. And then like every time he goes out to like Vegas, and now we're obsessed with like going to cocktail bars and like finding speakeasies and mm -hmm. like hidden stuff out yeah. in Vegas. It's so fun. That is it's fun. so fun. Yeah. So then he'll, he usually comes back with a drink. And then when we, we were, Paper Planes was like the drink of the trip where if a bartender right. knew how to do it, we would get him. And that's a good bartender. Yeah. Do, that's a damn yeah, good bartender. Yeah, yeah. Tip him well. <laughs> this guy was making us these fantastic Paper Planes, but the time in between the drinks was so different than a here. Yeah. And then like, I remember him being swamped and I looked and he had four tickets oh, and like that to them is busy. Yeah. We're back home. I said to Jared, I was like, yo, this guy would be fired. Yeah. Like, even though he's a phenomenal bartender, his pace and his timing from East to West coast and that West coast timing right. is he's like, yeah, I'm just going to make you a good drink. And yeah. like, I'm just like, I didn't care because I was on vacation, but I just kept right. thinking, I'm like, yo, anywhere, this dude would be getting screamed at right. because of the tickets. And then that's when I was like, man, it's it's so much slower out here. And he always said yeah. that to me where he was like, like, he's like, the East Coast is such a rat race. He's like, you're just constantly go, 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 go. And when yeah. you start getting into these other areas where people live differently and their right. perspectives on like time and where you should be spending your your like effort of your day is so right. drastically different than how yeah. it, we live over here. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and the more I keep traveling, the more I'm like, I don't think like I want to spend the back half of my life here. It would be hard for me to come home at this age if I went somewhere for a month. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was hard to come home. You yeah. know? But I came home to just have did you far. Did you, you find know? like... Did you find like the language barrier or anything a problem? Um, not in Germany. So I do speak some German. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, where else did we go? Uh, no, I mean, everyone in Europe, you know, like I would say like 50 and younger, you know, even, you know, whatever. People speak English or some yeah. sort of English, but it is a little arrogant going there, you know, expecting people to speak English. Yeah. So I learned like the basic things, you know, like, please, thank you. You know, where's this? Where's that bathroom? That kind of thing. Yeah. Water. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. So anyway, back to like the quality of life, you know, like it's just great. It's it's slow. It's slow there. You know what I mean? And, you know, I wasn't working. I was I wasn't even studying. I was just hanging out, traveling. Um, and I came back to the States with just like refreshed mindset. And I came back to House Bar and, you know, like I have five or six events a month, you know, had you created the name and the business and everything before you left? Yeah. So I created it in September 2022 um, in the middle of wedding season. <laughs> I was actually working for someone else. Um, and I just had this thought where, you know, I'm working 60, 70, 80 hour weeks, you know, and I'm making okay money, but like I just working way too much. And I just felt like totally not in control of my life. 
So I started. It's a terrible bar. feeling. It is when you know? just spun out will work. Yeah, yeah. You know, waking up at seven thirty, starting work at eight, going to four thirty, then going to a gig. At and five. it feels like it just happens. Like yeah. in the beginning, you're like, yeah, this is what I'm doing, and then like yeah. six months go by, and you're like, this is all I do. Right, right, right. And I thought I can't do this forever. You know, I have to. You know, I know how to bartend. There's a need for private events, um, and I. You know, I have the ability and the skills and the experience to do this. I should just do it. And I realized it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Fuck it. <laughs> Started House Bar in um, September 2022. And, you know, it was slow, you know. It, I didn't really – I had a couple events in December. But things really picked up 2023. Um, and it's, it's awesome, you know. I'm totally in control of my own life, you know. I work maybe five to six – like long days a month, you know, during the week, I do the marketing stuff, the social media stuff, talking to clients, sales stuff, um, site visits, so like, but it's fun, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like work. So anywho, looping, you know, talking about Europe and coming back, I came back to that. And it was just like a really nice transition. You know, I kind of felt like, wow, I can live, I can work, I can control my life. Um, and, you know, if I came back working, you know, 40, 50, 60 hour weeks, it, you know, it would have sucked. But, you know, it was it was good coming back and it was exciting. And, you know, um, 2023 was great for House Bar. I had like 30 gigs, you know. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. I only I had a goal of 10, you know, just 10, 10 events, you know, and hopefully make some money. But I surpassed that. And I was like, holy shit, this is working. That's cool. You know? yeah. I like to hear about, you know, you leaving and then coming back. And like, I think sometimes people don't pay attention to like your energy levels and like fill it, filling your energy levels back up and like creative people. Like I find it with myself. Like I remember just being in like such a, a weird place and like kind of feeling like tapped out on like art and things around me. And then I went to Vegas and like when I went out to Vegas, like I was just so overwhelmed by like the different things that were going on and how there wasn't any limits or boundaries and how all these crazy ideas make sense to somewhere mm -hmm. like that. And like, sometimes I need personally like to be refilled in like a creative sense and like be motivated in a creative sense. And then like, you also, you're not only like kind of going for relaxing and calming down, but like when I went out to Vegas, it was a very fat, like and when we went on the road trip, it's a very fast paced trip, you know, it's a road trip. So, but like, right. I'm now realizing like, hey man, sometimes you need to get away and you need to just sit and you need to come down and you need to stop the rat race. But then there's also times when you need to go and you need to fill back up on your creative sense. Right. And that's a, it's a totally, it's two different trips. Yeah. Cause like when I went to Vegas, it was more, I was sacrificing my summer vacation because I wasn't going to do both. Right. Um, I just couldn't do it because it was usually, it was either one or the other at that time. And yeah. I chose to do that. And when it was over, I wasn't, exhausted but it wasn't the same as like coming back from vacation and being mm -hmm. like oh i'm calm but like i do like being filled up in the sense of like art and like yeah like it's it's a really cool feeling to go and come back and then like get into your passion yeah and like yeah. i feel like that is like the best time i like even doing this tonight like i haven't podcasted in so long because of working on opening the restaurant and then i'm like i didn't know how I would feel because I don't know how this I don't remember how this feels because everyone's different but like even doing it I'm like oh man like I forgot how much I love this but like mm -hmm. sometimes it's good to just step away and yeah. then come back and then when you come back you kind of just like I don't know if you're supposed to be doing it and there's a purpose mm -hmm. behind it and you're pushing for it and you can monetarily adjust things with it like yeah. it's a, it's it's really cool to be in your own lane and run your own business. And I feel like mm -hmm. that's what people really can't explain about why they like running their business is like right. that, that lane that you first right. start out and you're like, yo, let's go. Yeah. And you're moving along and it's like, Hey, I got a couple gigs. And then you're like, yeah, yo, I did more than what I was supposed to. And then like, yeah. even, you know, if it's not the greatest things going and you have hiccups in between, like to me, like that is the core of why I love, my own business because I don't want to go, uh, you know, and be doing something I hate and all day. Right. I just remember like being younger and working jobs and be like, why am I doing this? Why yeah. am I here? Why right. am I, why am I doing right. this eight hours a day? Where's right. this going? Right. And then like, I remember working in Martin guitar and this guy being like, 
I've been here for this many years and you can retire when you're 40. And I'm like, or like, he's like, you can retire when you're 60. And I'm like, yo, I'm 22. Like, I don't want to stay here that long. And that was kind of like the first times when I would have conversations with people and I'm nothing against Martin guitar working in a factory. I just knew I would never be able to do that. Yeah, it wasn't I would for never, you. never. Yeah. And then that's kind of when you get into the bar and the pirate ship scene of right. the cooking and whatnot. And then you, you know, that's different because you're working nights. But right. that's awesome uh, mm-hmm. for you to come back and do that. Like when you come back and you start getting into the business and start moving it forward, um, how does it feel to take control of something that you liked doing but was kind of like not ruined, but like you didn't like it? at all times because of the corporate world attached to it like how Mm -hmm. was it to take something that like a craft that you enjoyed doing but it wasn't for somebody else and then apply it to you and make it your own thing um it's tough actually well i guess like what i do it's not it's a little it's different from the corporate world you know yeah you know i'm a single member <laughs> LLC, you know, but like it's just me running the business. I don't have to listen to yeah, it's how this anybody is. follow any rules, any procedures. It's kind of like what I want. So, you know, it, it didn't quite, you know, crafting cocktails, it didn't quite ruin that for me. You know, I'm still able to give that person, I'm hoping I'm answering this correctly, <laughs> but I'm still able to give that person um, you know, an experience, you know, that they are at a bar. Cause like what I do is I, I bring a full cocktail bar, you know, uh, everything, um, you know, everything but the liquor. So like, you know, the cups and napkins, the mixers, the garnishes and, you know, decor. I want them to feel like they're somewhere, somewhere special, enjoying a great cocktail. And, you know, I talk to them about it, give a little history and, you know, people are intrigued. They love this. Um, I feel like I took the best parts of bartending in a restaurant industry I made it my own by doing private events and I don't really have to deal with the corporate BS. Yes. You know? Yeah. 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 Like a manager telling me to mop the floors or, you know, scrub here and there, you know, I don't have to do any of that. I, um, it's, it's a totally different space. You know, it's the same thing, you know, making drinks, but it's in someone else's home or it's at a wedding venue. Yeah. Um, or somewhere outside, you know, it's it's great actually. <laughs> it's a cool like when you first started talking to me about it, um like I've always loved cooking. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorite things to do and then I'm just guessing from a creative standpoint like from just me making dumb drinks down here or whatever is like you can be super creative and use uh an artistic palette as your cocktail. And I mm-hmm. do that with food a lot. Like I do it right. where like when you taste a sandwich like when you taste my burger mm-hmm. i designed that for it to taste a specific way in like in your mouth when it's done being made is like how i layered it so right. like i've always enjoyed creating art through food yeah. and then i fell in love with that at a terrible job yeah. and then i was just like man i hate being here mm-hmm. but i sure love seeing somebody smile when they eat my food Right. And that, like, from somebody who's, like, insecure, like, for me to be able to express that as, like, a thank you to someone because you don't know how to, like, interpret actually having those conversations. And I would rather, like, I would rather tell someone how much I love them by them eating a burger and being like, yo, that's ridiculous, Mm -hmm. than me actually being like, hey, I love you, man. Like, that's my way of, like, kind of how I like making food. Yeah. So, like, to fall in love and that's not something i found out right away it's something that through this entire process i've learned as being an adult now that like i thoroughly in love uh changing people's emotions through food yeah and like i love people eating it and just they smile they don't know how to say anything they're like yo what did you put in here this is ridiculous like i love doing that Mm -hmm. and i know how to do that and when i'm trying to do that And then I have somebody ruining my entire day and Mm -hmm. like just being a terrible person or like a terrible mismanaged owner or like just somebody doing it to a point where like I gave up making food and I stopped doing it and I said I would never cook again. Yeah. And then I have my buddy Angelo come on the podcast and 
we were making food down here together and he started t talking about pop-ups and mm -hmm. then i bre met brian from local stone and he started explaining to me that he runs his own pizza business and he could do pop-ups yeah. and i just remember the moment where i was like i can cook again because yeah. this is something that I can take this business, mm -hmm. which already has a little bit of a following, and I can develop food, right. and then I can go take my car and a flat top, and I can, s like, when you were explaining what, like, like, I love what you're saying, because, like, I remember when we first started going to finishers, and I started the entire burger business in the parking lot feeding jujitsu guys. That's awesome. I would bring a tent. I always I always have to have music because I like cooking with music, but like mm -hmm. I used to bring in the corner over there there's a fake palm tree. And awesome. I Vibes. used to be able to fit it in the <laughs> van, so I would just put it off to the side. It didn't go yeah. with anything, but to me I was like, I'm just creating atmosphere. And then like yeah. we never brought it to that point because we we are going brick and mortar but like right. we always talked about getting like high tops right. and we're like how cool would it be if we're just serving cheeseburgers but you could sit at a high top and like <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah. i i love creating ambiance i like that right. one of my favorite things is expressing myself through how this studio looks right and like i've had friends help me build all this so like mm -hmm. when i was able to then reconnect with doing food, I told myself that I wouldn't let anyone ever take something that I love to do away from me. Yeah. And it was huge for me to get back into food, but I was running my own business. Now I was in charge. I had, I, you know, I asked one of my best friends, Gina, I'm like, Hey, can you just do front of the house? I don't want to talk to people. I don't want to deal with people. Just deal right. with the money, wrap the burgers, do that. And I'll split it with you 50, 50 and we'll start doing this. Awesome. And she was like, yeah, I'm in. And then like we just started going out and just booking at all these different bars and breweries and like we would set up a kitchen in a parking lot and then it was just eventually it was like you know it's way different what you're doing mm -hmm. as a far as far as what we were doing is kind of trying to sell food at a bar where if it's not busy you know what i mean like right. you're doing weddings and different stuff right. so like it made sense for us to go brick and mortar definitely and then like that's kind of like now but now i'm like man i would have never done that if i wouldn't have tried building my own business and being my own boss and then like still doing something that i love but then taking the stupid shit that always ruined it for me or in a sense of a corporate setting you couldn't really be as relaxed as you would want to be but yeah. like i love your story it's so yeah. cool because like I, it relates parallel with starting uh studio kitchen and like doing the burger and all that and like mm -hmm. there's just something to be said about like taking charge and like you know, you could have easily just stuck with teaching and right. not enjoyed it and then just kind of like, hey, in 10 years, yeah. I can do this and at least I have the summers off and like, you know, kind of like got into that. But you chose to go after this thing that you did like doing mm -hmm. and then you gave it up because of circumstances surrounding that and then you took right. that and then now you've made it yours and then yeah. now you have a business and yeah. you enjoy your life <laughs> i love my life it's, it's, it's never so cool. been better to it's be so honest cool. thank you thank you thank you yeah um a bit ago you were talking about you know doing something for eight hours someone told me they said if you do something for eight hours a day and you hate it that's a death and that kind it of is. Always, like always stuck with me so like House bar never, okay, you know, sometimes it's hard work, but it never really feels like work. You know, it's fun stuff, stuff I yeah. enjoy doing. Um, and I think I, like, I've, I've reached what I've always tried to, or I found what I've always tried to, what, I've, what I was always looking for, you know, just that freedom, you know, of just working for yourself, yeah. making money, being able to support yourself and doing what you like and it never ever feeling like work. I love the word uh, freedom you use there. Like I, I was, you know, there was like probably three to four years where all I did was podcast, which is totally insane to like think <laughs> that like I lived off of like ad sponsors and like right. there was it, there was other stuff I was doing with inside the business, but like I didn't really have an enormous goal to hit with money. But like once I was kind of free, I re like because I would always, I talk to my parents a lot and I go over there a lot and my you know I remember when I was cooking and my mom was like look like they sat me down and they're like look like you just come home and you complain yeah. they're like that's all you do is complain about like the situation at work like you're miserable yeah. and then like I remember never being happy working at like I've had so many jobs I've the last job job I had was the post office and when I left that and like finally got over the hump and was like over like the scaries of running a business and like it was working I was like oh you just want freedom 
You wanted yeah. freedom to like think in a specific way. You wanted freedom in the sense of like when you got up, how to dictate your day. Like I, I remember always being like, man, I got to work like a 12 hour day again. You, I'd be working six 12 hour days. And then I'm like, man, I really want to go to the gym. And then it's just like, oh, well, I don't go to the gym now because I yeah. do this. Oh man, I really want to go do this with my friends. Oh, sorry guys. I can't do that because I'm doing this. And then when you look at it, it was like, all right, well, I'm just doing this thing I hate over and over and over again and I don't have a life. And then when I mm -hmm. broke from that pattern and then just started working on shit I wanted to work on, the money really wasn't the most important thing. I just remembered how happy I was and like how calm I was. And yeah, exactly. sure, it's stressful to run your own business, but right. it's not the same kind of stress where you're just smoking cigarettes on your ride into a work at yeah. a diner. I'm just right. like, this is horrible. Right, right, right. Been there. <laughs> Worked at a diner. I'm also like, why am I cigarettes? smoking yeah. two cigarettes on a five minute drive yeah. to work? Right. It was just right. always impending doom. 6 a.m. cigarette. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, I quit. Don't do those anymore. But. No, I quit too. <laughs> Congrats. Yeah. That's awesome. I awesome. smoked cigarettes for a very long time. And yeah. I have terrible asthma. Wow. Uh, yeah, those, they don't go well together. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. My mom kept trying to tell me. I was like, no, it looks cool. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, it does look cool, but it's not cool. <laughs> Should don't we smoke, smoke now? Yeah, right, right. Let's smoke something. <laughs> um, where... Um, like, so now, you know, you brought us up to the part where, like, your business is running and you, you got the bar going. Like, yeah. what what do you do with it now? Because, like, I understand that you got to get it on its feet, but, like, what are some cool features that, like, you do? And, like, why don't you kind of explain the business a little bit more yeah. on, like, what it actually is? Right. So House Bar, it's a mobile bartending service. So it's a bar, it's a team of bartenders. So me, my sister, who's a bartender, Jenna, a couple of friends of mine who are bartenders and we go to events private events like weddings mostly weddings um bridal showers baby showers here and there <laughs> um birthday parties any sort of celebration and we you know we're like a pop-up you know pop-up bar yeah and we make it you know it's not just like an eight foot plain table it's an actual bar and i have three different bars oh, the bars it. are cool yeah thank you i'm building um another one a fourth one it'll be a huge well bigger one um but yeah we just come you know come to the event really like uh, bring a beautiful setup so people feel that the you know the event is elevated if it's like a ten thousand dollar wedding it's gonna feel like a hundred thousand dollar wedding when we're there yeah <laughs> you know what i mean no it's cool and we make special cocktails um handcrafted cocktails you know seasonal stuff whatever's in season local ingredients you know local herbs that kind of stuff and you know everybody everybody loves special things so yeah we also do a coffee service um but yeah, private bartenders bring bars to any events, serving mainly Lehigh Valley here and there in the Poconos, Philly a little bit, but I like serving, you know, my community, Lehigh Valley, people know us here and the marketing on that is a little bit easier because people know what we do. They know us around yeah. here. So that's cool. Most of my clients come from word of mouth. You know, we're constantly referred by friends, wedding vendors, that kind of thing. So it's, it's really great. So, um... Yeah, so just like pop up bartenders, I guess private bartenders. That's cool. When mm -hmm. um, when you like, I know you get into specialty cocktails. So like, when a client gets involved with you and they want to hire you, like, mm -hmm. do they kind of tell you like, hey, we like gin, or are you like, hey, these are like our seasonal cocktails? Like, kind of yeah. walk through a conversation would be yeah. of like as if somebody was trying to book you for an event. Right. So. For example, let's say it's a couple getting married. I do have a seasonal, I have two seasonal menus, like a fall and winter and then a, um, a spring and summer. And again, it's local seasonal ingredients on there. I say, hey, you can choose two of these, you know, for your signature cocktails. And that's what I usually recommend for couples getting married. Like, you know, um, his and a his, a his and a hers, whatever, you know, hers and a hers. You know, like those two signature cocktails. People want to drink something special at a wedding. So, you know, I can either show them a list of things, we can make something together, but sometimes the couple's like, hey, my favorite thing is a blackberry Moscow mule. Can that be our drink? And I'm like, yeah. And, you know, the other person's like, oh, I love uh, a vanilla espresso martini. Can that be mine? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So there are other people that, you know, are a little bit more complex, elaborate. They're like, oh, I like mezcal. And I'm like, all right, let's, you know, let's talk about what we can really do with mezcal. So that's, there's people that like want like special creations and I can do that. That's no problem. I just have to ask questions like, 
you know, what what do you like? What are you allergic to? What don't you like? Do you like something more savory, more sweet, you know, bitter? So I kind of like find those, you know, points, points. of where you can yeah. start. Yeah. And then, yeah, I craft up some cocktails. So then do they meet you? So like if they, I'm guessing this yeah. first call is a call. Yeah, it's a call. Yeah. Most like, yeah, definitely a call. Um, whenever someone reaches out, I call. I'm like, hey, what's up? I'm a real person. <laughs> it's a real yeah, business. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a newer concept. Yeah. So not everyone's like, you know, understanding of it. So yeah, we do a call. Um, we chat. If they're like wanting to book me, I do a site visit. So if there is a party at someone's home, I go to the home and I look to see, you know. Where you can set the bar up. Yeah. That's got to be fun. Yeah. Yeah, it is. You know, I bring my little tape measure. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, my bars are like six, seven feet long. So I need to know like where it can fit, where it's going to look. You know, there's times where I've showed up to events without a site visit and it's kind of, you know, a little stressful. I take too much time, you know, talking to the client. Hey, where do you want this? So it's good knowing like going in you know, having that experience of being there and figuring out a good spot to set up. Um, yeah, and then that's where, you know, we chat more about like their cocktails, their the taste buds, you know, what they like, flavor profiles, that kind of thing. And then I guess the next step is, you know, coming up with those cocktails and then, you know, executing the event. Yeah, but I keep in contact with them. You know, I don't yeah. like, go with them like, hey, how you doing? Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, that kind of stuff. That's you cool. Know? Yeah, yeah, because we get booked out like, a year in advance, like last year, we um, booked like five or six events for 2024, like early on in 2023. So that's kind of how it works. I'm like getting inquiries for 2025 now as well. Um, yeah, because usually, I mean, if you're doing weddings and all that stuff, that's all got to be taken care of. Yeah, yeah, right. Way and ahead of time. Way ahead of time. And some people are a little, you know, more responsible. I have people reaching out for 2027, one couple. <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit, if, you know, the world's not, you know, <laughs> in pieces by then, yeah. yeah you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Who knows? But, yeah, um, people, it's, you know, depending on what kind of event it is, you know, that it really depends on when they're reaching out. Do you get um, involved with, like, doing special events for, uh, like, Music Fest or stuff like that? Or, like, when they hold awards or, like, you know, is there people who, like, Lehigh Valley Style, stuff like that? Like, do you get to do, like, events where it's not really, like, wedding so much? Where it's, like, more, like, for, uh, not corporate, but, like, you know, like, kind booked of, for an yeah, event? Yeah, like a like a grand opening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just some sort of, of an those. event. Yeah, any kind of event. So if, like, some businesses are doing, like... Um, a promotion or like a store is opening they're like yeah you know a couple people have called me like hey can you be at this event serve you know some cocktails people will come in check it out and it, it works you know so like businesses really like this like i'm set up in the back so that means the customer's got to come in check out the store have a drink in the back sip the whole drink look around the store maybe get a little tipsy feel a little warm yeah, and, fuzzy yeah, yeah, yeah. and buy something so yeah we we get a couple of those calls what's your favorite uh what do you look for like, what do you like doing the, the best? Do you like doing the weddings or? Yeah, the weddings, just because we can make them real special. Yeah. You know, like we go all out. We want people to feel like. Do you theme yourself to the theme of the wedding? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the best of my ability. Well, like our vibe, our brand is like speakeasy, warm, jazzy. You know, yeah. I, I like to keep those you have elements. A cool vibe. Thank you. Thank you. Like the candles, the wood. Um, you know, like little tiny art pieces, maybe on the bar, the books, old books, stuff like that. So you put a lot of time and effort yeah. into your bars. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I want you to feel like you're in a cocktail bar in the 1920s in yeah. New York or Paris or something. You know what I mean? I want you to feel like you're somewhere else, not just someone's backyard or someone's basement or someone's dining room. You're somewhere special. What uh, what bars do you currently have? Are they all the same vibe? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, they're all the same vibe. Um, like dark wood warm feelings you know um beautiful antique looking and then they're just different sizes in case you need more yeah. bartenders yeah, per different, yeah. event exactly that's cool it is cool it is cool yeah and our events they range from sizes you know i think the smallest one i ever did was like 20 people and that's fine you know we'll show up no problem i'll just bring the smaller bar and then we've done um events upwards of 150 200 where i bring two bars and i actually have a couple weddings uh coming up well not like coming up but in October 200 people 200 guests so I'll be building two did you get nervous <laughs> for those bars. um no not really I mean in the yeah. beginning yeah but I've learned you know how to best prepare myself for these events do like, you remember what event you were like holy shit this is working <laughs> um let's see 
A lot of them, yeah. Like, yeah. I kind of think of that a lot. But yeah, um, what event was it? Probably my first event. I was like, wow, someone fucking paid me money to come bartend in their home. And I'm making tips too. You know what I mean? And, you know, I kind of just always have that feeling like, I can't believe I do this. It almost feels, it's not illegal. Everything I do is legal, I promise. But <laughs> it almost feels like I'm illegal, you yeah. know? Like, I'm like, how the hell am I making money and happy and enjoying it? Just, it feels feels good i always used to tell people when they would like ask about the pop-ups and stuff and they were like kind of like you know like what do you what's like the your favorite part about it and like i always say to gino i'm like it's always the ride home oh, nice. it's always the ride home like because we yeah. would be in the van and then we'd be like what went well what well we i would always start out with like all right, this is what I didn't like tonight. And then it was like, all right, well then like, what should we do differently? And then it was like, that was always talks early on of like, you know, I remember we, st this, we started this so long ago, like, I, and it's so crazy to look back on it, but like the first time we did it, like I didn't even have a tent. Yeah. Like we just had a flat top, a Burning table. In the sun. <laughs> yeah. My bald ass was burnt. <laughs> and then I was like, yo, we should get a tape. We should get a tent. And then we got one tent and then there was people standing in the sun and then we went with two tents and nice. then like it's crazy to like peel back and like i'm sure it was similar to you and like you know and it's like you kind of get it gets lost and like because you're you're you go so much further than where you started but like i just remember like getting to a point in the beginning where like we weren't making money because i was putting it back into what we needed to actually run the business like just the different yeah. like the totes the tents like getting right. all the equipment like the sp you know um we ended up getting like this warm box that um it like holds temperatures hot or cold mm -hmm. and a friend of mine used it for barbecue and he, he had no use for it anymore and um we had bought it off of him and that's what ended up changing like the whole business because then i was able to make like 50 burgers and put them in there and as awesome. long as they just wanted the burger yeah. the way i made it and they weren't like ketchup and mustard a lot of times i just said no because we didn't have that stuff <laughs> right, like, you know what i mean right, they're like right, right. hey you got mustard and i was like nope made yeah. it this way spent four years that. on it <laughs> i'm like try it right, so right. um when we did you know it's like you get all these things that end up like defining and like changing the business into it but it was always the ride home it was always the ride home where we'd be like we should do this we should do that this yeah. this that and then you laugh about stuff hey this person that person was crazy right. that person was so drunk or like it would always be fun to like people would come up and they'd be like oh so you there's supposed to be a good burger better be worth the money Oof. then like five minutes later they'd come back and be like i have another one right, <laughs> and then right, they come right. like a, i've already had people come back three times and be like i have another burger yeah like that's always cool when like people are always like because i don't say anything about my food like i right. just make it the way i make it and yeah. i like to listen to music and i like cooking and right. during that time i'm counting the burgers go away and when there's you know half of them are gone i'm like all right we're good <laughs> but uh mm -hmm. you know there's a lot that goes through your head when you're working an event and yeah. uh mm -hmm. i always liked going home like that not but like i was relaxed because it's stress it's always stress it is, but know. it's like for some weird reason i enjoyed that stress like i enjoyed it for bartending or cooking like it's yeah. just this built up pressure and then i think it's the release and then it's like when it's all yeah. over it's like ah it's done it that went, went well that worked that's great. Yeah, let's it's go over with. let's go yeah. and then, you know that was always so much fun and then we'd always be like and i remember is you know i said to her is like you know i think we, i was like we should go brick and mortar and she mm -hmm. was like yeah coffee shop she's awesome. like they don't have that in nazareth and it's like we're close enough to nazareth You're that right. it's still what we're gonna do is gonna hit for what we want it to be but like we're like oh, all right and then i'm like okay well how do you want to control our hours because it's like well it's up to us so it's like all right well let's do morning and afternoon only so yeah. then you have somewhat of a life and then, right. I, then it was like all right but like it goes back to like what we were talking about earlier is like you get that control and then it's like all right well i can control it and you make a couple sacrifices here and there but as long as i'm allowed to do the thing that i love to do then it's right. worth it to me exactly yeah. exactly you know that makes the ride makes home sense. yeah yeah ride home is nice like nothing went wrong <laughs> <laughs> we did it it's done we got paid we had a great time everybody was happy that's a great feeling. Did you always get into the seasonal stuff with your making cocktails? Or did you just kind of like, do you like doing that? Where like you kind of follow the pattern of yeah. like what's fresh? Um, fresh is the best. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you know, but I will have passion fruit like in December, January. You know what I mean? I love passion fruit, but it's not even local, but it can be fresh, you know, at a czar. They've got everything, every kind of fruit, vegetable you can yeah. find. Um, but just 
finding, you know, whatever is in season and local is going to taste the best. Like there's this one cocktail I do. It's called the Alpine. <laughs> it's pretty much a gin and tonic, but like I a little gin and tonics. Oh, yeah, very classic. <laughs> yeah, little elevated though. <laughs> My friends don't like when I drink gin, but I love gin. And yeah, tonics. gin's not for everybody. It's no. not. It's not. It's an acquired taste for sure. But what I do is I, I sweeten it up a little bit. So I add um, like an like an herb syrup. So I have like rosemary, thyme, and those are all all grow local here. And then pine needles. That's crazy. I picked them. Yeah, and I made it into a tea. And I, you know, inf- put together all these herbs, made it into like a simple syrup, added to the gin and tonic, and I called it the Alpine, you know, and then I burnt some rosemary over top of it. So you feel like you're drinking a cocktail in the Alps, you know, with like these local ingredients. Um, it just, it tastes better. There's a story for it. You know, there's a story behind it so people can hear it. They like those things. Um, and it, it, the taste is just unreal, you know what I mean? Like something local. When did you fall in love with the rabbit hole of making something like that? Like, it's not normal in a sense for someone to put all that together. And like, Mm -hmm. you know, like you're layering, (laughs) like you're layering flavors, like how I was talking about, like making food, like, and not everybody opens up Pandora's box to get that, that dialed in. When did that occur that you fell in love with doing things like that? Oh, geez. I think it was like. You know, I worked in a couple bars where there's like these obscure ingredients where you just kind of look at them like, all right, what's that? Tasting it behind the bar. What would that taste good with? You know, I'm like mixing stuff and just creating and trying and experimenting and coming up with things. And I think just like those really boring like hours where no customers coming in where you're just creating and you're thinking, you know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And being a mobile bar in the Lehigh Valley, um, you know, in, in this area, there's other mobile bars too you know so I have to differentiate myself I have to be a little bit different and I think you know taking these experiences that I have these traveling experiences going places trying new flavors seeing what locals are drinking and then finding stuff here that's seasonal local separates me from other people yeah yeah so and and just being unique you know people like special things you know like vodka tonics or vodka clubs gin and tonics are great you know but if you can elevate it, make it special, and make it different, give someone a story, an experience, I think I think that's 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 why I like doing it. And that's kind of where I I like to dabble, you know. Yeah, because I mean, you were like gin, and I'm like sold, and then you're like, yeah. how about I do all this? And I was yeah. like, oh, I would love that. Yeah, that's I, cool. Yeah. I like that you dive that deep into taking something as simple as a gin and tonic and then right. really just making it this crazy unique right. thing that right. most people probably wouldn't think to do or right. like to infuse right. like that like it's i like that a lot yeah thank you and you know starting with like those basic things like a gin and tonic old fashioned too you can do it those things are comfortable people know those things are familiar with those cocktails but when you have something special a little bit different you know i think that's where that's that's where like I'm different. Yeah, Maybe. it makes it uh who you are. You're you're applying your creativity, you're applying everything that makes you your person that mm-hmm. probably your friends and family get to see on a daily basis and then you put yeah. it into a cocktail and right. you're kinda of telling your story through every drink. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. We should uh we should collaborate on something. Yeah, yeah, we should. <laughs> and what I've been doing, I'm working on the spring and summer menu now. In the slower season, I've got some time. And, you know, fruits are great, you know, to mix with drinks, cocktails. But I was kind of thinking, like, all right, what vegetables are, like, socially acceptable in cocktails? And I came up with a red pepper. And a customer, not a customer, but at a party, uh, one guest was telling me how she had this cocktail with gin and red pepper and mint or basil and citrus. And I'm like, you know what? That sounds great. So that's on my menu now for, you know, spring and summer. And it's just, like... You know, um, it's it's comfortable thing, you know, gin and tonic, but then you had red pepper to it. This other whole, you know, layer of flavor, something that's different, but like not too different, but, but that'll blend well with gin and these herbs. Who gets so. to uh, <laughs> like, who do you who do you feed these drinks to? Because, you you know, like yeah. I make stuff in the kitchen and I'm like, yo, try this. And then yeah. someone will be like, oh, this is really good. And then you got to keep getting it out there. Yeah, I'll call my sister. Ask my yeah. sister, Jenna, um, or I'll try them. Um, or, you know, 
a friend. Just you know, do you start like ask, slowly serving them at like events and stuff? Like try this. Yeah, yeah, I do. I'm yeah. Like, all right, what do you think of this? They're like, oh my god, that's really freaking good. So that's yeah. like a good sign. That's you fun know what to I mean? do too. Yeah, 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 it is. Like, hey, I've been working on this. What do you think of this? <laughs> so, yeah, but people reach and out to me. And that feedback's important too. It is. It is good and bad feedback is so important. But every now and then on Instagram, I have people like messaging me like, hey, can I just come over and just try these cocktails? You know, it'd be your taste tester. If you ever need anybody, reach out to me kind of thing. I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> have you ever done that? No, I don't even know how to go about it, you know, because it could be yeah. Saturday, 9.30 a.m. I'm in my pajamas and I'm making a cocktail. And yeah. Like, you know, I'm not going to invite anyone over at that time. Do you like your time to make your drinks? Do I what? Sorry. Like your time to make your drinks, like when you kind of find like a yeah. like a space where you just like, oh, I want to do that. Because I'm, I'm yeah. guessing you think about the drink yeah. probably while you're doing stuff during the day. And then yeah. you're like, oh, I want to I put my thumb on that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, like I think about it. I take that time later whenever I like have the time, you know, to really like sit down or stand up, I guess, make these cocktails yeah. <laughs> and try them. Yeah. That, that part's fun. It is. It is fun. You know, you're, you're, it's like almost a science at that point. You know, you're playing with. Yeah, I, I always flavors. like to get in the lab. Like, um, yeah. I'll text. We go back and forth. Like, I'm more like, I like flavor and I like to, like, my stuff's like a little louder where Gina's stuff is like a little bit more like, here, try this. It's good. Where I'm just like, oh, there's so much stuff on this. So, right. like, I like to collaborate with her where she'll pull my stuff back a little bit and then i'll pull her stuff forward a little mm -hmm. bit and then we kind of create like some really cool stuff but like yeah. uh meet in the middle there yeah but then i also like creating on my own where um i'll be like man like i really want to get back in the lab and then like it's been such a long journey to get into the kitchen and then like last sunday uh my brother hooked the the flat top up and i seasoned nice. it and it was cool like it's, it's been hard yeah. um it's been hard wrapping my head around it's happening yeah and i'm trying to pay attention and like take it in like i sat in my car the one day and was like you have a restaurant and i'm like oh <laughs> and like <laughs> right, uh, right. it's i get emotional sometimes just sitting there like fuck man like you know it's a lot of work oh, God, so then it's like do it. you kind of yeah. stop and i mean the whole journey and i'm sure it's similar with you where like yeah. you know there's a point where like you have to realize that like this is your thing you're doing and you're yeah. chasing your tail to build it but sometimes it's good to just stop and take it in and i'm right. i'm trying to like you know because it's it's not going to get easier it's going to be totally insane when we open it is like it's going to be, be a good insane yeah, you know yeah. what i mean <laughs> so um i went over and um i was like all right i'm gonna make the burger because uh, working on cast iron and working on stainless steel are two separate things right so i'm used to working off cast iron and i have to get used to seeing the steel and the burgers stick differently and like mm -hmm. i was like all right so i went over and seasoned it but it was cool because it, it's it's been a while since like uh you know like i I love getting in the lab like when I go to pick up the ingredients over at Sailors and I'll start talking to them and the guy was like, oh, your seasoning is like here, buy a quart of lard. He's like, use lard to season the flat top. And then wow. like, I'll go over and talk with like modern crumb. But like, I like talking yeah. to the people I'm getting my ingredients from as well before mm -hmm. I create. And then like, I just kind of get filled with all the stuff and I'm just like, man, like I can't wait to like put this into the food. But like, right. it was so fun to just go over there and like, I'm just like in sandals and basketball shorts and like, I'm just listening to act. <laughs> And Bronson, and I had a moment yeah. where I was like, I have a fucking kitchen. Yeah, this is I've been your cooking space. down here yeah. the whole time on like camping equipment. Like, it sucked. Mm -hmm. Like, building this business in a fucking basement with no cooking equipment the entire time. And now it's like yeah. I have a six foot flat top, and like, it was fun. It was yeah. fun. And then my buddy came over and he's like, What if we make a double cheeseburger? Yeah. I'm like, Yeah, let's do it, man. He's like, Put bacon on it. I'm like, Cool, That's let's awesome. put bacon on it. But it's fun to like have that. There's so many like, you have your defined business of being a bartender, but then right. there's so many elements around it that people don't get to see, which I'm trying to like showcase on here because it's so many cool things about you that not a lot of people get to see when like you're in the lab and you're creating yeah. these drinks and like sharing them with friends and then you kind of build up the confidence yeah. to give it to the public. And like, yeah. I just, I feel like people don't get that perspective or there's never really that shine on like, the work that right. you love to do that goes into it where someone's like hey that drink was awesome but like i'm still curious how you even chose pine to put in your drink <laughs> like you know what i mean yeah. like uh yeah it's crazy to 
because I look at it from my perspective where I'm like, man, I love getting in there and I love, and like, I definitely have made burgers that sucked. And like, yeah. I thought they were going to be all, it's usually when I think something's going to be so good, it's not. Like, it's mm -hmm. usually when something just kind of comes together. Mm -hmm. But um, that's, that, I, I love that about like that aspect of it of just like getting in the lab and like putting the like the little things in because then i'll say yeah. to gina like we're trying to build our menu out so like awesome. this weekend i won't be able to do it but like i want to start getting over there and like you know we're doing a cuban so it's like all right i, I gotta get that cuban back down we're doing the yeah. roast pork like you gotta like get in and like you know craft your cocktails like those drinks yeah. aren't awesome because you made them once right you right, had to do right. it a bunch yeah yeah measurements you know like all of that is important like how much liquor, how much um, liqueur, you know, how much citrus, you know, herbs, that kind of stuff. That's all important. So it's all really like, you know, I have science. Made, it's, it's a science. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not like I just make one and make 10. Do you write it? Do you like write down on like a sheet of paper? Like, um, how, do you, how do you keep track yeah, of your stuff? On my Mac. I used yeah. to write everything down, but I just. Notes. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. On my phone, actually. <laughs> yeah, a lot. yeah. 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 I'll yeah. go back in and be like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I'm out somewhere, you know, and I'm like trying something. And there's flavors that are working, and I'm liking it, and I can yeah. picture it in a drink. That's in my notes. I have a bunch of random notes on there. Yeah. It's like random, random, you know, fruits, vegetables, ingredients, <laughs> for sure. Where do you want to go with this business? Where do you see this business going? Yeah. Are you happy with the way it is, or do you see it getting bigger? Like, how do mm -hmm. you, uh, how, I mean, you, it, it's only been, how many years have you been doing this? Uh, a year. Like one year and like four months yeah so like yeah. you're still early on and yeah. like where where do you want it to go yeah. in the next five good question because like that's crazy like because from talking to you you probably would be bored with doing the same thing over and over so you would yeah. have to right you're right, gonna push right. the business bigger yeah what do you yeah. want to do great question um right now i'm loving what i'm doing you know it's working i'm gonna keep doing that but um i'm working on building bigger bars so i don't i like being mobile you know i like private events I don't think I ever want to go brick and mortar. Brick and mortar is uh, it's a lot of work, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's it's good work, and I'm sure it's <laughs> I'm just rewarding. Getting nervous. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, like, I, I told just, myself I would never do that. Yeah, I mean, you just, I mean, I I've worked in the bars and I've experienced it. There's so many moving parts, and what I do right now, it's it's perfect for me. And you know, the workload is not totally crazy, um, but. What I'm doing is I'm building more bars so we can take on more events and I'll have more bartenders so we can be in more places. So I can yeah. be I can be double booked. Yeah. I can. I okay. don't now love I, it. Now I see with doing um, <laughs> yeah. the extra bars and stuff right, like that. Right, right. And I can be triple booked as well. Not a huge fan of that, but it's doable. But, you know, um, there's, you know, X amount of weddings in the Lehigh Valley. Have you let and, others do an event without you? Um... Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> but would uh, you trust that? Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 To be that booked up where you're like, all right, yeah, I'm going yeah, over here. Yeah, you take yeah. the other bar and go over yeah. here. Yeah. But they'd have to like watch me, you know, I'd be like, okay, come over. You need to watch the yeah. whole, the whole thing, how it happens. And cause you don't want someone representing you right. in a way that like wouldn't be the experience that you give, which is hard because exactly. it's your baby. Exactly. 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 And I've talked to a lot of business owners that say, you know, stay small, just you and a couple other people. But, um, you know, I, I like that advice. You know, I love being at the events and I always want to be at the events. But, you know, May 18th, I've got a couple um, events. You know what I mean? So I can't be in both places, you know. Um, but, you know, I trust my sister. She cares about the business. Yeah, a lot. that's good. Yeah, and I pay her good. So she's probably like the highest paid bartender in Lehigh Valley. <laughs> 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 I pay her good so she does a good job. And I pay all my employees well. So they do a good job. You know, I expect a certain level of excellence <laughs> i sound like a horrible person but you no know, i don't i think it's important to pay people correctly yeah, right pay them correctly um so they do a great job and they will you know and so you know i have a couple people that i i trust that can run the business without me but you know i do have to accept the fact i'm not going to be at every event you know and i'm gonna have to be you know sometimes taking phone calls instead of you know being at the yeah working the event you know growing that way so that's where I see it going in a couple of years is more bars, more people, and being more places. It's but, cool. But still keeping that quality. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's doable. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm excited to uh, see how it grows. I'm excited to see um, where you go. Like, since we started talking, um, 
I've already kind of figured out a couple ways we can collaborate. Yeah. Um, because I've done stuff down here where I take that bar and I put it over by the curtain, and then I just kind of tie the curtains back. Nice. And then that area kind of like turns into a lounge. Ooh. Um, yeah. And then I had this open. What did we do down here? I, I had a comedy show. Um, and then the other one was uh, we re recorded um. Uh, live music. Yeah. So both times. Um, that sounds great. And then another time, I think my buddy Nate, we I used to do this uh, thing called the Burger Club, and um, it was started on like Valentine's Day, so I guess it's a year anniversary coming up. But mm -hmm. um, it was like I designed a T-shirt, and then you got uh, a burger, and then when you came down, it was like a complimentary drink was like the loophole to serving alcohol down here. Yeah. But it was built in with like a ticket price, so yeah. like. Every time we did stuff, like everyone always took care of the bartender right, and it was like right. a way less stressful thing for me to have to deal with than mm -hmm. like, you know, when you're hosting and trying to keep everything together, um, if the cocktails and that end of it is taken care of, it is like such a weight lifted off your shoulders where like, I didn't, I just asked someone to do it and was like, I'll pay you. And then she was like, if I get X amount in tips, don't worry about paying me. And she hit yeah. that every time. Oh, and that's awesome. I was like, cool, that works. And then, yeah. um, but then I always like, we would create a specialty cocktail together beforehand. I would buy all the stuff. And then right. it was, it was just such an added feature to the event where it's like, yeah, there's a bartender there. I'm yeah. Like, yeah what's People up? get real excited about yeah. a bartender. And they're like, holy yeah. shit, you guys got a bartender? You know yeah. what I mean? And that makes me feel good too. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it is tricky with taking at events, though. Um, we can do those for nonprofits. Yeah. I've done that for, like, the Da Vinci Center. They've hired us, and they've sold tickets, um, and they pay us, but um, it's it's tricky, you know? No, Ticket everything I did down here was, uh, <laughs> was completely <laughs> Under illegal. the radar. <laughs> completely. Uh, there was a point where I was nervous, and then I was like, whatever. Like, right. who's paying attention to right. you in this basement? And in, in reality... I don't think, you know, the authoritative figures are paying attention to you, you know, like no. the LCB. <laughs> they I was, about uh, the big dogs, you know? I was definitely mature about it. Like right. everybody, there wasn't kids here. Right, um, right, right, you know, right, right. And you're not running like, a whole business down here, you know, you're not doing it every week and every night. No, no, it's no. Here and there, it was, uh, just so you could pay the girl. Uh, yeah, like I look there. back on it and it was wild to do the stuff I was doing down here. But when I got this space, I wanted to push the space to its potential and like having a comedy show and mm -hmm. recording music down here and like getting content with it like it was basically like you know we had a full camera crew and everything and like yeah. you know um like i said i outgrew the space so like i'm excited to like apply like i'll look back on this and be like yeah it's so crazy that you did that but again it's part of the story and part of the journey and now you know where i'm gonna be it's it's cool to have um it's cool to have like a location and not have to worry about anything and have a licensed kitchen and like right. being able to do it right above ground. <laughs> Tell me about that, <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like uh, you know when when you hit that level, it's like all right, cool. Like you know, like this was a lab in the sense of like doing events and yeah. stuff, and like you know the Burger Club like really worked. And then I was like, all right, like this it's a really big pain in the ass to do it this yeah. way down here. But like when we get to our next point, like let's bring that back and like, right. you know, every three, four months, let's do a shirt drop and like, you know, right. be able to like showcase everything. It's, it's a lot of cool stuff we worked out down here that I'll, I'm eventually going to bring back that like most people won't realize that it was started in the podcast studio. Right. Like, you know, the people that fuck with me from the beginning, like I have yeah. people that just follow cause I went to high school with them and they're yeah. like rooting me on. But right. like, there's going to be a, a side of this where people don't even know who I am. And they're like, ah, oh, that guy sells bagels and you can buy that stuff off of them and not really know anything that it like yeah. totally was created from nothing. Uh, from the spot, but like, right. I, I love putting on events. Um, I would love to collaborate with you. Um, yeah. I already have a couple things that I think we can do that would be really fun. Um, mm -hmm. I want to thank you for coming on. First off, thank I want to apologize for rescheduling because, uh, Don't worry. but nobody ever sees the behind the scenes. I think I had right. to reschedule this seven times, but my favorite okay. part about this is that like, there's people that I have rescheduled with and they either just stop trying to reschedule because they think yeah. that I don't want them to come on or like, I love doing this. Yeah. I'm so glad that like you were like, Hey, like kept at it where it was to the point where I was like, just, 
get it done. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? But it's like every time I had to reschedule, it was because of stuff that was going on with the restaurant and it was stuff out of my control. And like, the, like I love that you kept, and then like even coming up to this week, I'm like, oh, I get to podcast. Yeah. Like I haven't podcasted in so long and I'm like, oh, I really want to do this podcast because she really yeah. wants to do it. Like yeah. you really wanted to I, do I it. Do. I did. I, and like, I, I felt yeah. that because we kept trying to reschedule and you're like, no worries, no problems. I'm, yeah, you know, I'm easy, and, and, you know. But it was like, I like that because I was like, no, like she really wants to do it, like yeah. do it. And then, then yeah. like now that I have done it, like I forgot how much I love this. And like when people are like, are you ever going to stop doing the show? Like the answer is no. Like I will yeah. always create in some sort of a form, helping people out, putting people up, whether it's in my restaurant or whether it's in a location similar to this. Like I don't, I don't ever want to stop doing this. So one, I want to thank you for coming on and thank telling you. your story. Thank you. It's really cool what you do. Uh, I love bartenders. I love that you were able thank to take you. this craft and this thing that you love and make it your own and take it out. And like, I love that you breezed spending a month in Europe. I'm right. like, can we please go back there? Um, yeah. And you still didn't touch on it. And I bet you that was yeah. such a Next cool time. journey. Oh, yes. It was. It was. Um, a couple countries. Yeah. It was you, awesome. Like, uh, it's funny when people do that. And I'm always like, hey, can yeah. we go back there? Yeah, I'd, I just threw I'd, that like in there. To, I'd like to go to Germany. <laughs> yeah, um, you should. I think it's cool what you're doing. Thank um, you. I want to give you a chance to. Uh, let everyone know like your social media the social media is awesome to follow i always yeah. love seeing like you're out somewhere and like when you tag the guest bartenders and sometimes i'm like i know that bartender oh, but uh it's awesome. cool like uh you do a very good job of your social Thanks. media it is worth following along with um if you are looking to book her or anything i want to give you a chance to kind of put yourself up and let everybody know how they can get a hold of you yeah yeah i appreciate that thank you so much so on my website um housebar.us.unitedstates um Everything's on there, but my Instagram handle at housebar.us, Facebook, housebar, mobile bartending service, I think. Um, yeah, Instagram, you can message me. Uh, my phone number's online on Google. You know, I'm out there. I have it everywhere. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, find me. Call me for any events, any kind of celebrations. If you're a first time listener, first time uh, watcher to YouTube, I never know how to say that. It's neveragainstudio.com. Um, you can go on there and access uh, the video, the audio. Um, I don't have any merch at this point connected to anything I'm doing. Um, I will be doing stuff in the future. I don't know when, I don't know where. The restaurant is coming. There I actually said it. Uh, I'm opening a restaurant. I'm probably not supposed to be talking about it because we Sorry. talked about it for so long and then we lost it, but we have a space with constructions going on i don't know i guess maybe i would say that we'd probably be open in april i shouldn't even be saying that but i'm excited uh i'm excited to give you guys food i don't know how much more of this style will be going on but it will evolve and i'll probably be doing stuff over at the restaurant um and uh that's it check out all of her stuff appreciate you for listening appreciate you for following go follow all of her stuff guys thanks for having me on here yeah appreciate of course it. thank you we cheers. did an hour and 14 minutes Woo, lots to talk about <laughs> cheers thank you so yeah, much no, it's a great opportunity it. all right